Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Lynn Manuel Miranda board game review shows. I'm going insane. This is my brain. I'm playing that game. It's not very lame, yo. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at Friedrich or Frederick from Rio Grande Games. In Frederick from Rio Grande Games, up to four players take on the roles of the various belligerents in the Seven Years' War as it was known in Europe or the French and Indian War as it was known here in America. Essentially, one player, the most experienced player, will take on the role of Frederick, King Frederick the Great of Prussia, as he tries to stem the tide of all of his enemies. The Russians, the Austrians, and the French, and of course their allies, the Swedes, the Holy Roman Empire, etc., etc., etc. Now, the game board, of course, is a map of Germany and the surrounding nations. Uh, you've got a grid going through it, and in the various squares of the grid, you have different uh, suits, different card-playing suits in there. Spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds. They're all around that board. Now, the board itself, the map of Germany, is a series of towns connected by roads. You have main roads, and you have kind of smaller roads. You also have various objective markers for the various belligerents throughout the board as well. Now, the chief unit that you have is your general, rather the army that the general commands. You have a number of these at the beginning of the game, and uh, the board itself tells you where to set them up. They're numbered uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. And each of these armies, of course, is named for the general. So you have Frederick, uh, Seidlitz, uh, the various other Prussian generals. You have the Russian generals, the Austrian generals, etc. So there are these little cylinders... And you also have a corresponding sheet of paper. And this corresponding sheet of paper is going to uh, have kind of the names of all of your generals, all of the armies, the maximum number of army strengths you can have, troops you can have in an army. And then also it's going to have kind of uh, some other information you, you will need. What you do is, at the beginning of the game, you begin to assign your armies. Now, I think the Prussians start out, I think, with seven armies, and they have a maximum of 32 troops. So you've got to divide 32 in any way you want uh, into those uh, seven uh, different armies. Now, you go ahead, you figure out exactly how many troops are in each of your armies. And again, uh, you've got the Prussians, who have a Hanoverian ally, the Russians have the Swedish ally, and the uh, Austrians have the Holy Roman uh, Empire ally as well. So they actually can kind of control two different uh, countries. Now the object of the game for the uh, people trying to attack Prussia, the Austrians, the Russians, the French, is to capture all of their objectives. Now they're all fighting Prussia, but they're not working together. They're looking to capture their objectives before any of the other players can. Now you can capture just the objectives or secondary objectives as well. Objectives, of course, is kind of an easier game. Uh, but they're trying to capture their objectives. Now, Frederick can try to capture his objectives as well, which are located in, for instance, Austria. He can try to capture some of those. But mostly, he's going to be playing a defensive game here. At the beginning of your turn, you're going to draw a number of playing cards. There's four different decks or different colors, but that doesn't really matter. You're all getting uh, cards from these decks. Now, these cards have numbers on them, but of course, they also have those same suits. The clubs, the hearts, the spades, the diamonds. So you get uh, however many you're supposed to get. I think the Prussians start with seven. Um, the Hanoverians start with, I think, two, maybe. So however many cards you get, you get those um, for your hand. There's no hand size in this game. Now, on your turn, you essentially can move your army three spaces, three cities, along a regular road or four spaces along a main road. Now, in addition to your armies, you also have kind of supplies. These are little cubes that follow your armies. They can only move two on, on regular roads, three on main roads. 
but if ever your army is outside of your country's borders, it has to be no more than six spaces away from a supply. Otherwise, it's flipped upside down, and then you can lose the army altogether if it's not in supply by the end of that turn. Now, you move your armies around, of course, looking for engagements or defend certain areas. Now, once you move your army next to an opposing army into an adjacent city, then a battle uh, will ensue. Once you've moved all of your armies, you'll have the, the uh, battles play out in the next phase. Now, during that battle phase, essentially, the, the attacking player can say, you know, which battles he wants to resolve first. And this is where those suits come into play, because whatever suit you're attacking into, whatever city you're attacking into, whatever suit is in that grid space, uh, that's the only card you can use. You both reveal how much troop strength you have in those armies from your sheet. So if you've got six, the other guy's got five, uh, essentially the guy with the lower number has the initiative. So he can play a card from his hand that matches that suit. So if you're attacking into a spade area, he can play a spade card. And if he plays, say, a six, he adds that six to his value of, of his original troop strength. And then if the original player, the attacking player, if he is now... The, has the lower number, then he has the initiative. So he can play. Uh, he can play multiple cards to kind of get the initiative up there. You're going back and forth, you're playing cards to, to try to get the most strength. Sooner or later, one of you will not be able to play a card or will choose not to play a card. At that point, whoever lost the battle will lose a number of troops from his, from his uh, card there equal to the number of the difference between the final cards played. So if your final tally was 21, his was 27, you would lose six troops, you'd erase the six there. If you lose all your troops, boom, that general's out of the game for at least another round. Additionally, that general is going to have to retreat that number of spaces. So if he lost six troops, he'd have to retreat six spaces. Now, while the various other powers, the French, the Russians, the Austrians, are trying to capture the, the objectives within Prussia, the Prussian player is simply playing for time. He's trying to, now he starts out the most powerful, he's got the most cards, he's got the most armies, but he's also got the most enemies, and they're all coming at him, they're all trying to attack him, so he's got to kind of play this kind of delaying action. His armies are kind of firemen running around putting out fires on the board. Because after the sixth game turn, after the sixth complete round, suddenly you start drawing cards from the Fate deck. Now the Fate deck's going to do different things. First of all, it may bring up various um, conditions that maybe affect certain generals or what have you. But critically, some of the cards are actually going to say things like Sweden drops out of the war. Uh, the Empress Elizabeth dies. Russia drops out of the war. Just kind of what saved Frederick in the actual uh, Seven Years' War. And one by one, the different powers will fade away. And if Prussia can essentially get all of his enemies to, to have withdrawn from the war, and he's successfully waited out the war, he wins the game. Now, there's, of course, a little bit more to it than that, but that is the kind of the basic overview of how one plays uh, Frederick. Now, I've got to tell you, this is a game I've had for years. Uh, years ago, Rio Grande Games sent me a copy of Frederick to review uh, when I was doing my written reviews for the Deseret News. And this is a game that I have loved since the first time I played it. I love this game. It's one of my favorites. If you've watched my top ten lists, you know this is a game that's consistently been near the top of the list. Um, it's just a an incredibly good war game. Well-designed. Uh, well thought out and somewhat abstract in, in the way you're playing the, 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 the suit cards, but very good, very interesting. It's great because you want to expel some of, some of these invaders from your territory if you're Frederick, but the problem is, do I have the cards so I can give battle where I need to? And if not, should I just move close to, to where he is so that kind of forcing him to, to, to maybe realize that if he wants to come to get his objective, he's got to go through me, and I, it's a complete bluff on my part. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to take a chance and maybe with what limited cards I have, try to beat him? It's a very, very, very good game um, because of these, these decisions, these tough decisions. Do I fight? Do I bluff? Where do I where do I hold if I'm Frederick? You know, which enemy? Where's my priority? Do I, do I shift everything down toward the Austrians? And kind of let the Swedes run wild, or do I have to send someone up towards Sweden and kind of keep them in check as well? Do I really just use the Hanoverians to keep the French at bay, or do I send in some some Prussian reinforcements to help the the Hanoverians? It's very very good. This is a game that just 
man, every time I play it, I, I fall in love with it all over again. I actually hadn't played it uh, probably for about two years, and then I just played it again the other night, and I thought, I, I've got to review this, because I want people to know how much I love this game, how much I think this game is absolutely brilliant. Truly, truly one of my favorite games. I highly recommend it, and the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer is buy it. Buy Frederick, you will love it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, years ago, I actually visited uh, Potsdam, uh, Frederick's home at Sansushi, which is a beautiful palace modeled on the Palace of Versailles. Frederick was a very interesting character. Um, he was uh, somewhat a feat as he was growing up. And his father, who was barely literate, uh, he didn't care, he the father of the king, he didn't care for the son. They, they did not get along. Of course, he forced the boy to join the army, and uh, Frederick did not like the army. He hated every minute of it. He had a good friend, uh, Lieutenant von Kata, Hans von Kata, and a uh, possible lover, some people have suspected. And uh, several other conspirators uh, with these two decided they were going to desert from the Prussian army. So they were found out. They were arrested, and Frederick, um, a boy, about 18, 19, was forced to watch as his friend Von Kata had his head cut off. It was a very traumatic experience, and from that point forward, Frederick studied, he worked hard, and he became a uh, master strategist. Of course, uh, when his father died, he became king of Prussia, and he became one of the great Enlightenment monarchs of the age. Frederick's a fascinating fellow. You should read up on him. Somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you in the rest of this video? What do you think my life is all candy canes and popcorn dreams? I have a job!